I'm your host, Ken Patterson. We are at the 13th annual St. Louis Prototype Modelers Meet. I'm doing an outdoor photo shoot. We're going to talk about this table saw. That's absolutely magnificent. This is the best hobby in the world. The what's neat. What's neat. What's neat. What's neat starts now. Catch the What's Neat podcast every week and full episodes of What's Neat every month at the Model Railroad Hobbyist YouTube page. You're supposed to be singing. You were so singing earlier. <laughs> I, I, I only sing for money now. <laughs> <laughs> Whistle while you work. Okay, copyright. <laughs> Jeez, hey, no. hey it's, it's April already. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. I was out there today cutting all my ornamental grass and moving all the rocks out of the bed so I, I can. You're going to yes. poke me with a. Okay, wait a second. Yeah, we're a we're so pencil. close here. Are we? Oh, oh, yes. Oh, so very close. close. Starting. Get a little oh, closer. Okay. Don't be shy. <laughs> Richard, give go. us a countdown. You ready? Three, two, one. The What's Neat This Week video podcast is supported by enthusiastic model railroaders just like you. <laughs> Further support is provided by Microengineering, keeping you on track with quality products for 55 years. Check out their website at www.microengineering.com. Order from your local dealer or order direct by calling 1-800-462-6975. Additional support is provided by Spring Creek Model Trains, your destination for model trains. Stop in and say, wow. Check out their website at springcreekmodeltrains.com. And by Intermountain Railway Company, where the detail makes the difference. Check out their website at intermountain-railway.com. Additional support is provided by Yelzma Graphics, America's leading distributor of quality railroad art and embroidered clothing since 1985. Check out their website at yelzma.com. Further support is provided by the NCE Corporation, the power of DCC. Visit their website at ncedcc.com. And thank you for supporting the What's Neat This Week podcast. This is What's Neat This Week in Model Railroading, show number 270 for April 6th, 2024. Wow. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, the host of the What's Neat show over at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine, and that show is going together, and in a few days, I will know what's in it. I know that sounds crazy, but I love surprises. And uh, we've got a really good, George Bogatuck is working on something, and so that's why I know it's going to be good. So the April show is going to be out in nine days. Yes, it is. Nine days. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. That's a great show, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got a lot of neat new stuff to talk about because it seems like this is the best hobby in the world, and it's doing very well. <coughs> Everybody I've talked to on the phone in the last two weeks, I've heard nothing but positive. Things are selling. Things are moving. There are so many new products in the works that are being manufactured and planned right now. This is the best time to be in this, the best hobby in the world. I know that sounds corny, but you know what I'm talking about if you're out there modeling <coughs> right now while you're watching our show. Thank you for letting us into your living room. Tonight, we've got a great lineup. We've got Mike Buddy sitting here. Hey, Mike. Hey, everybody. It's good to have you tonight. Thank you. Sitting right next to me, I've got Joshua Barton. What's up, everybody? Sitting right next to Josh. Mr. Smile, Steve Mantia. <laughs> Hello, I'm glad We've got to be a here. Train show coming up very soon yes. that we're going to talk about. Yay. And on the end, we have our favorite James Regeer. Hi, everybody. Who has come up with some really cool new 3D printed models, which I'm really excited to uh, talk about. Um, it's a beautiful week here in St. Louis. The weather today was absolutely fantastic sure, outside. Yes. As I was shooting some gorgeous, gorgeous model from Broadway Limited Imports. But you get a sneak peek at this, the Southern Pacific GS4 locomotive. It comes in this amazing box that I'm holding in my hand. Um, it's a 484 in Southern Pacific, and this is not in the daylight paint scheme. It is in the black 
paint scheme. That's what they got... used after it was done with uh, passenger service for the most part. Absolutely correct. So we can pull freight trains with this one. That Paragon 4 sound in there is awesome. It is. It does have Paragon 4 sound. Absolutely fantastic. As you can see in all the outdoor photos I just sent you, this is a sweetheart piece. I have been running it down here since it showed up on Monday, and it's been running every single night, pulling a, a consist of mixed uh, Bachman and uh, various passenger cars behind it. But it just runs smooth as can be. It's got a really nice... Uh, it's You can tell the design of the locomotive. This was designed for high-speed service with the great big drivers. And it works the same way when you're running it on the layout, as opposed to a steam locomotive with smaller drivers, like some of the Pensy engines that we've seen. This thing really moves beautifully. It's, it's designed to travel quick. Hmm. That's what I'm trying yeah. to say. All those words. <laughs> just the yeah. It is yeah. a beautiful It goes engine. fast. <laughs> yeah. It I'm likes immaculate. to go fast. <laughs> yes, that's it. Like Ricky Bobby. So I had to get that out right away. I really wanted to talk about that. Um, Joshua, we went to your house this week. We sure did. And that was really cool. A breath of fresh air to see some really good models. Well, it was great to get you out of the basement, first of all. It was nice to and me so and Holly both came by. And so they, they Landon came by was and, with uh, us, right? Yeah. Uh, here's a picture of Ken with my uh, shelves right behind it. I took a bunch of, uh, you know, I'm poor just like everybody else these days. So I had a couple old water beds and I cut the wood up and made shelves here. And then I got some two by fours and I made uh, some desks for people to do projects on. So I have three specific areas in the, uh, in the work spot. And then uh, I have this video here that we're showing of uh, my yard starting out and then the transition that I'll have to do from that yard to the foam that I have. And then here's uh, my turntable here. And uh, I'm just kind of measuring things out, make sure I can get a double track main line behind it and uh, make sure that all my measurements are right and uh, getting along with it. So it's, yeah. it's fun to work on trains again. I've been out of it for over a year and kind of had everything stored away and it's fun to get back and back on the track. So I appreciate you and Holly coming over and seeing nice. all my stuff. And that was nice. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I did see hearing you about you know harvesting old furniture for uh, for lumber basically and and that sort of thing. I know when we did the remodel on our house, uh, we because we were going to be replacing all the doors and some of them weren't you know even going to be there anymore. Uh, we took all the old doors, stored them in the basement, and they'll become uh, layout surface. But yeah, uh, <laughs> but they. But for now, you know, they're serving as an endless supply of, of desktops and, and other things. So, Well, an amazing thing about yeah. this hobby is, you know, you're a woodworker, you're an electrician, That's you know, all. you do all these different things. And yeah. I found a knack for really liking to work with wood. And on the first layout uh, of Fountain City and building the bar and doing the epoxy and stuff, it taught me a lot of really neat stuff that now I'm moving it's kind of like putting here. a big model together, you know. Yeah. You it, plan it, it out, is, cut you the know. parts, to, you know. And, yeah. and just like Bolt Ken, just like Ken does, he builds it in his head a thousand times before yeah. he ever lays anything to, to actual, yeah. you know, fluidity. And I'm like that too. I'll think about all the different things and how it could be and how I could put this here and this here, and that really troubleshoots a lot of things in my mind for. Yeah, for doing projects happen, like yeah. that. Yeah. But you have to have all these big projects done before you can get to the little stuff, like the track laying and stuff, you know? Right. Exactly. So once you once you have that done, then you can move on to all these other things. But mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where I am at, at my layout right now. Beth, I think the thing that you just said that hit me was you've got to think it through first. You've got to do it in your head first. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you do it in your head, now you, when you do it, you've already done it. Exactly. And it right. works. Yes. Um, it doesn't just apply to modeling. I actually apply that to real estate. Every, I pre-planned yeah. how I was going to close those. Well, from, <laughs> from, from you know, in, in my field, execution of food and how doing things, you know, when you're plating uh, a party of 100 people, you can't lay out 100 plates at once. You lay out 20 plates at once, and you have five different people put five different things on, and it becomes an assembly line, but you have right. to figure yeah. out what mm -hmm. goes where at what point in time, mm -hmm. right. just like that. So, I mean, that that attitude and that mind frame can really be applied to just about anything sure. in life. Mm -hmm. Exactly, know? yes. No, I totally agree. And Joshua, what I think is really good is when you plan it out in your head, you have everything in your head, and you transpose it onto your layout, 
it makes it that much more satisfying when you see that it came out exactly how you would Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I there's a number of, of softwares out there that'll help you uh, design your layouts. Many of them have all and, the and see, all the different track catalog right there on them. I I have four or five programs that I've used, and that's not. That's more fun for me for playing a video game, not for designing yeah. my actual layout. I want to be there with tape measures and notes and deciding what kind, you know, radii, uh, radius tools and deciding right there. I'm a hands-on person. I'm yeah. dyslexic. Mm -hmm. Right. I didn't learn very well in school, but I got through <laughs> school. And, well, now, now that I'm older, I've learned how to do things differently than the way that they taught us in school. Mm -hmm. And it's a hands-on visual mm -hmm. thing. It's using those and using a pen or a, a pencil and, and seeing it in real life, you know? And that's that's how I do it in my head. That's how I needed to do it in real life. Right. You know? I'm, I'm the same way. Yeah. yeah. Pencil and, you know, draw I mean, it out. Yeah, yeah. to the point where you're like, you're a real railroad, where you're putting the plans down on a Well, that, that's yeah. the thing. you got to follow your blueprint. We have to get him a microphone. Yeah. And we I need mean, another camera up here pointing at him. I agree. And then yeah. I can run camera. Okay. Yeah. Right. Here we go. Wow. Here we right. go. Plans for the future. Yeah. What's Talks need about this another idea. So many ideas. We need yes. to get back on the road. We need to travel a little bit. Yes. Um, yes. Train shows. And speaking of train shows, you've got one coming up. Yes, May a 11th. A train show. A train coming show. up here in St. Louis and after the storm. After the storm. Thank you, Glenn. That's the name of it. Yes, that's it. Then the, there's that's a flyer the for me to put up. So yes, we everybody have a flyer. will know the We're location. Mm -hmm. The yes. Arnold Eagles. And this is a fun show. There's a lot of neat stuff at this show. Yes, sure. And yeah. you're sold out on tables. Uh, actually, yes, I am sold nice. out. And it's, only, it's and only three bucks for adults to get in. I mean, oh, you nice. know, it's, that's what you want to do is. Get it inexpensive to get in, so people spend the well, money, yeah, you money spend with your the money vendors. on the train. Yeah, that's absolutely. it exactly. So. I have a few new vendors for this show. A couple of them have retired, and I've got some new vendors, so I'm happy with that. And I have a lot of my regular returning uh, vendors also. So uh, very nice. So it was a great one. hit last time that I yes. was there. So yes. we had we we're hoping that each show increases uh, turnout. Um, it will because every show that has been going on this year so far. The turnout has been very good. It's so increasing. I feel like there's that, a lot so. more people that are slowly getting into the. I'm seeing more um, Mark Twain commercials on TV. Mm -hmm. Our our local hobby shop, a lot more Schaefer's yeah, commercials. Schaefer, right. mm -hmm. uh, that's that's really good. That you know they're getting their names out there and getting. Mm -hmm. You know, the general public doesn't think about model trains a lot unless you're yeah. walking through Target and there's a model train on there, which no, there isn't. It doesn't. There, yeah. there isn't. So, no. yeah. It's been interesting sort of watching the, uh, you know, the uh, ebb and flow of the hobby over the past couple of years. You know, because uh, when we had, you know, when we had all that stuff with that time that we don't want to think about, everyone was down in their basements. Right. And then there were a lot of people that got sick of it. And so... There was sort of a slowdown well, in the hobby. Look but at now how much money back. was spent during the pandemic. I mean, yeah. everyone was in there, and and thank goodness for mail. Thank goodness for you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Amazon and that kind of stuff. Because I mean, people were saying it was Christmas for that whole time in yeah. the hobby. The sales, yes. Yeah, sales wise, people were just buying, buying, buying. And I know. I had leaps and bounds of things done by the end of the pandemic that I couldn't have done right. with my regular nine to five job. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, there was a good part and a bad part, but it really excelled a lot of our layouts during that time. We'd like to help all those folks out there, those groups of people that are running train shows around the company, country, just like Steve <laughs> does. Around the country. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, the fact is, this is a perfect platform to promote your train show. I mean, it's got a worldwide reach. Uh, we, th It's immediate. You get the word mm -hmm. right away. Right we can yeah, change that, the message yeah. quick. So if you sell out of tables, we don't have to talk about that anymore. Yeah. If we can show a picture of your venue, say when the show is, where it is, and draw more people to your show. And as I'm sure Steve can contest or say, is the fact that over and over again, the repetitiveness of year after year is the increase that you're going to see of people exactly. that see it on the show and yeah. they and they know to go. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's just, it's a great way to do it. You can go to KenPatterson.com. There's a section on there for um, train shows. I just made a new page where you can, you know, find out the basic things that we need. Again, a flyer, a picture of the venue, the dates, when it is, how we can help you promote. 
and in exchange, you're going to help us promote the hobby too because you're going to help the show. And please, so it's a back and forth thing. Yes. Please don't wait till a week or two before the show. Let us know a month or two well, ahead they of time. To, that way, if they want to sell tables, you got to be a couple months out on the right, announcement. Right. Exactly. I would say definitely. Well, even you, and some people plan their shows months in advance. Exactly. It could be a six month in advance thing, and then hit it again in three months, and then right up the show, boom, boom, boom. Well, you got to think a lot of people have work or you know have to get off for a weekend right. or something. So you know you need ahead of time. Right. I'm already booked. You know for the RPM, for the NMRA if we decide to go. You know I've already taken those times off, but. You know, you it's a good deal. Mm -hmm. It's good coverage. Yeah. We can t custom tailor the message, and you'll get it. It's just like the business card ad in the back of a magazine. You just pay your small fee, and boom, mm -hmm. we promote. Yep, yep. We talk about rock, it. And rock and roll. Rock and roll. Okay, yeah. so exactly. speaking of train shows, this week is the Rocky Mountain Train Show, and Yay. it is going gangbusters out there. I have talked to. I have talked to everybody, George. Robert Steers sent us these beautiful photos of the show yeah. of all the friends that we already know. I mean, yeah. all the companies, the Rapidos and the yeah. Stephen Priests and Last all the various, just go Absolutely. through the list. Look at all mm -hmm. these smiling faces. Happy manufacturers, happy model railroaders. The Rocky Mountain Train Show, I heard, was a great success this yeah. year. Yeah. And I, I know Andrew Balvis went out there with his Santa Fe All the Way uh, modular layout as well. So, and that's a, that was featured in What's Neat here uh, a couple of years ago. Um, basically, based off of the Museum of, Sci of Science and Industry layout uh, that they had. Uh, it was Museum in Santa Fe all the way in O scale. But yes. uh, Andrew has taken it, put it in HO scale, done a fantastic repl replication of uh, Topeka, Kansas, and then a lot of other places along the way. Uh, and the bar still shops. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think Very we cool. ran that video on the What's Neat show. I think I interviewed him. Yes, yeah. yes, when, when he was that? in St. Charles. Okay. Where's uh, Daniel when you need him? <laughs> it was a gorgeous layout. I yeah. know, and if, if I'm getting it right, I might have just run some B-roll of it. Because yes. it was a fantastic layout. Yes. It just, everything laid out just perfect. Everything just was set up just right. But yeah, if you get a chance to see his layout at a train show, I know he takes it to all sorts of places around the country. Do it. It's, it's entirely worth it. Or go right. to the index, the What's Neat index that's out there. Um, and WN index. And check it out, mm -hmm. because all the What's Neat shows... You can go straight to that layout and look at it. It's worth a look. It's worth yeah. a visit. Yeah. So we got the uh, eclipse probably happening right when this show comes out. Right. That's why I didn't go to Colorado this weekend. And the, the last yeah. eclipse we had was a full eclipse in 2017, yeah. August. I think mm -hmm. it was around August 8th, if I'm not. I but Don't get me on the date, but I was shooting the diorama that we had just built for Jeff Otto in the backyard during the eclipse. And so I had to wait for the eclipse to go away before I could finish shooting my video, but I had a little bit of fun with it. And on the What's Neat video, I actually ran the eclipse going on, explaining that I'm waiting for light so I can get this photo shoot over with. Yeah. But the background is amazing. Everything around me is amazing. The darkness is true. The insects, all the crickets come out and start chirping, and the birds yeah. get all quiet. It's an amazing... And the wind changes. There is a wind Sure. I remember the last time around. Now, did totality yeah. hit here? <clears throat> yes. yes. Yeah. I know it hit in our backyard. And I, yeah. I just showed you all our the videos awesome. of it. Yeah. All, I ran just a few videos of it. I'm so sorry my high-speed camera cell phone video didn't come out. I was at it, Sugar Fire, and I pulled all the employees out, and I told a few customers that were in there, I said, we're taking a 20-minute break to look at this. And, yeah, we all had glasses, and it was very cool. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't really. It was like twilight, I guess. Yeah, it's, it doesn't yeah, get but really it's, totally dark. Correct. It's, yeah, it's an eerie it's dark, twilight. But yeah. yeah. Well, but it when is, the sun disappears completely and you see that you see that right, corona, right. That's it's that's pretty, breathtaking. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. so. definitely. All right, so that's coming up this week, um, and that's gonna just about finish everything off my list. James or Gear, you brought some vehicles tonight, but you actually are creating a new fire truck. Tell us about that and what year it is. Well, so. It basically all started with these Model Ts last year, and I, I totally revamped the models, um, added a lot more detail, including the including the crankshaft, redid the wheels. The uh, the Model Ts will now have the roof as an option that you can either do wow. a convertible or the roof down or the roof up. It's uh, you've really it's a come separate a part. Way. Yeah, so that's really cool. I was uh, I was really press, uh, pushing the envelope in terms of what I thought the uh, printer could do on some of this. Unfortunately, this was the first te test print. And aside for some supports being uh, 
way too much so that you basically cut apart the part while you're trying right. to cut it off the supports. Um, I'm pleased with what came out. Um, so this is, I've now learned roughly a 1926 or so uh, Model T, uh, uh, Model T Roadster model. And what was different for 1926, I've learned, is that they actually had that little hood vent, you know, that would normally uh, send fresh air into the, uh, into the uh, cab. But it wasn't, uh, that, that wasn't its purpose. They actually moved the gas tank from underneath the, underneath the seat to right in front of that firewall. Mm. <laughs> Which, uh, I, I'm not sure about the safety aspects of it, <laughs> yeah. but that was, that was a significant change for that year, and, and it did change the shape of the car. Um, this fire truck represents a uh, 1918 uh, Ford Model T Howe Pumper. Okay, I'm shooting B-roll of that. And uh, that's uh, nice. Yeah. nice. And I'll actually cool. and I'll actually paint up a, a later model. You know, when I've when I've got all the kinks worked out. Um, but it was based off of a uh, fire truck that uh, some folks in Texas have restored, and uh, you know, it's a it's a beautiful machine. Uh, the the pump itself is is open. You see all you see all three pistons. You see the crankshaft above it, and uh, trying to replicate that crankshaft in such a matter that it would actually look functional uh, right. was probably mm -hmm. the biggest challenge of the whole product. Uh, but you pulled it off. Yeah, yeah it's very good. Cool. And it and it's a separate part, so that can be painted separately because there's a lot of a lot of tiny yeah. details. Okay, I'm shooting B-roll of these little yeah. design pieces that you've got here: the wheels, but, the axles. Check um, this out. Amazing. But the supports, the port supports at this point, bear in mind, are a bit of a mess. I've corrected that. Okay. Um, we'll see what the test print uh, that's right now on the printer does. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a it's a chain driven. I I drew up the chain even in 3D, and I'll I'll actually show the uh, STL graphic uh, from the computer of the uh, of the of the whole thing. Um, but uh, I I did everything I could to make it look as much like that. As that, as that truck as I could good try job. and get away with no, you did good. and have cool. as many separable parts, you know, for painting, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, actual truck did not have this bell and bumper on the front of it. It just had, it just had the bare front. Um, but I liked the bell and the bumper, and I saw it on another truck, so I thought modeler's uh, license on that one. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but yeah, it's a uh, it uh, was a fun project. Took a heck of a long time to figure out all the all the details on it, um, but uh, in the end, I'm pretty pleased with how it came out. Um, Good job. Learned very a whole lot of things about the prototype too. It's very nice. Yeah, they're beautiful. Cool. Yes. Like, did you know that the early ones? The, this has <laughs> this has separate pl separately applied lanterns. Um, the early Model Ts until about 1920. They had to have kerosene lanterns mm -hmm. that mounted to the windshield, and the reason for that was that they weren't allowed to drive with headlights after dark because that would or in town because that would scare horses. Hmm. So they had to have these lanterns instead, which wow. would look like carriage lanterns, and the horses were used to that. Wow! <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, the rules! Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's... like things that you don't think about, but I guess those were those those were a factor back then. Mm -hmm. All right, Mike, buddy. Yeah, Look well, at I, you. We got some Look uh, at you. Some other stuff that, up there from Bernard Helen. Bernard, and, mini prints. Mini prints. Yeah. yeah, some couple things I'm I'm going to take home and work on is the first thing over there is a boat trailer which Boat trailer. Okay. I I've, I've been kind of wanting one of those for a while in uh in HO to hook up to some of my cars and and uh, I have some model boats too, so I'm kind of nice. looking forward to that. But uh, nice. yeah. Then uh, after that is a couple of dogs peeing on a fire hydrant, and then there's a <laughs> row of fire hydrants there. <laughs> yeah. So that's a nice little detail. I'll take that home and yeah, that'll be fun. Um, then there's a, a guy with a hard hat. I I don't know who it is. I'm sure it's somebody that Bernard scanned. He scanned so many people now. Well, um, he's got a whole catalog. Didn't it go people. with that uh, compa compactor there, uh, or something uh, like that? That uh, I'm not sure. That is a compactor. Yeah, yeah, this is a 
uh, like those a, things a are huge trash compactor that you would see behind a store, like a, a, yeah. a, a grocery he store. You might be the worker giant. that's that's running it. That, Could be, yeah. and uh, and the associated rats that rats run around that's, too. Uh, giant it rats. has rats. Yes, yes. HO scale rats. Dude, <laughs> that's pretty neat. <laughs> okay. So, but that yeah, that compactor. I mean, I've worked with them, and it, that's that looks very realistic. I mean, it looks just, and that's a real cool detail that you could put. On the like in a, on a background building, you know, d that's uh, really just to detail something out. Have that compactor in there. So a uh, couple more things up there is uh, some security cameras, modern security oh, cameras. So, oh, okay, that's what those are. Like yes. mount under the eaves or, and then a leprechaun with a pot of gold. Oh, I God. guess that was for <laughs> St. Patrick's Day. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I, I will <laughs> say that that regardless of scale, that's bigger than any pot of gold I've ever found at well, the end of the rainbow. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, then the uh, auto racks back here. Um, Walters acquired the rights to do the Accurail line of auto racks. Okay. And, um, at, towards the end of, of Accurail's production, they did a buy level with the paneled sides like this but Walters took it a step further I was really glad to see this and uh, I have a had a tri-level version of these cars and they were prolific in the uh, mid to late 70s the first generation auto racks that had uh, stone shields side panels attached to prevent damage from thrown objects and shots and bottles and everything else <laughs> sure. and, so, yeah. uh, first two uh, road names that I saw, I, I bought, and uh, this one's Conrail, and the Conrail logo is kind of faded, which I thought was a cool touch, because they, you know, they would have painted everything except, I mean, you know, painting over that unless they put, put a new logo on. A lot right. of times they didn't do that. And, uh, and then, same thing for this car, even though it's a mid-70s wreck, it's got, uh, Erie Lackawanna placard on it, which I guess probably got absorbed when Penn Central came along. I'm not sure, um, but I'm sure it was swallowed up into Conrail in '76. So um, I, I I liked it. I remember seeing these Erie racks, and I always liked that logo. So I got these two right away, and then this one is filled with Burkina Ford Torinos. That are those glued in? Uh, just with Elmer's glue so I can pop them loose. Okay. So, mm -hmm. but these are, uh, I brought some of these a few weeks ago. Oh, these are the ones nice. from uh, Bob yeah, Johnson and nice. Masterbuilt Models. Mm -hmm. I bought enough to do an open tri-level, so I actually bought 15 of them. Sweet. Um, which, that was a lot of money, but it, to me, the on the auto rack, the, the cars are the most important thing because that's what people focus on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. So, um, well, and on those, you can just get away with doing nine of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, um, and they're already detailed. You don't have to do much of anything to them. Right. So, uh, anyway. Uh, nice work, Mike. Well, I guess yeah, you could add those little nice. price price stickers and that's all that. Pro yeah. that. That's probably he one does. thing I'll do, but I don't. I don't want to have to take them all apart. I might try That's and just true, put a yeah. decal on the outside of the window and see if anybody can tell. Right. <laughs> the Torinos are beautiful. Oh, they are. They're gorgeous. So, they only have four colors. I'm hoping they'll come out with some new colors and I can get some more from Bob and switch switch them around a little bit. Yeah, they are bad. <laughs> Very nice. Very yeah. cool. Mm. What are these colorful things on the table tonight? It, it's opening day in St. Yes, Louis. Yeah. 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 I, I seriously thought about bringing the Car Clydesdales, but yeah. I know. you didn't bring the Clydesdales. <laughs> no. I needed to, well, but okay, I, bad. This uh, is some cool stuff, Steve. Yeah. This I, looks like Snoopy. I love yes. Snoopy. Yes, Snoopy and Woodstock there having a little, yeah. you know, playing a little you baseball. You always bring the most colorful, pleasant things here. Yeah. I, Happy they things, nice. happy, yeah. happy fun. A little, just something different. Mm. I always have that way. So. to say this is a happy show. It is happy. A no, happy this show. is cool. These are LGB cars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Charlie yeah, Brown doesn't look too happy. He's he never happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell me what's going on with the trees we have over here. Will you yeah, grab that great big uh, tree? I got contacted by a gentleman by the name of Creston Parker. He has a tree company called ScaleTrees.com. And he sent me a really nice letter awesome. this week with a couple wow. of boxes of which we have four of his different products Look here. This that. first That's one is an huge. oak tree. This is a 12 inch HO scale oak tree. And it's scale in size. These are 
wire armatures. We're going to talk about this. Wow. The show's going to run a little bit longer because we're going to talk about these trees. Um, the other product is a four-inch tree that Mike's got down on the table. Check these out, Josh, here. These, again, are wire armatures. The bark looks here, take good. take that off the base. Yeah. Wow. So we've this... got three sizes, four inch, eight inch, and 12 inch here. Look at this base. It's mm -hmm. super sturdy. The trunks are there's, nice. Yeah, there's a metal base. Yeah. It's like a washer. Push it right in there. Yeah, that's right. Up. It's got a... It's a flat washer. It's got a penny mm -hmm. nail on the bottom, ready yeah. to go right into your foam, foam These pad. are scale size trees for HO scale. Because trees are... Trees are big. They're huge. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. The average trees on the bluff model that I built were 110 feet tall. And I believe that this 12-inch tree here looks like it's more like 86 feet tall. Right. Yeah. But this looks like the tree in the backyard they're about to cut down. The great big billowy mm. tree that's well, got limbs that come out 75 mm -hmm. feet each direction. This yeah. is 40 feet each the direction. The one outside doesn't have any leaves on it because it's been dead it's for dead, 12 yeah. years. So but how realistic not just is like it? It's, no. it's very realistic. You can these check out nice. these trees on his website. Uh, and I looked at them a few minutes ago. Scaletrees.com. Just go ahead and type that into okay. your search and bar. Look, he has, hey, he has a set of 13 forest trees. That's another they range product. from four Mike. to eight oh, inches. Yeah. yeah. Small now, this is a group of trees that I think he sells as a big package. So, And the whole point is to create scenery quick, I guess, in the background or various sure. parts of the layout. Sure, you have those in the background yeah, and then have right. something big like this little in a couple spots. Mm -hmm. point, yes. And yeah, it'll definitely... So he's, it looks to me like he's made great use of a medium, like a furnace filter type medium to create right. the tree effect for these types of uh, background scenery trees, which is nice. Very cool. These foreground trees, another service that Creston said to me on the phone that he would do is if you send, you're building a model of your property or a specific model of a location where there is a specific tree, you get pictures of the trees, you send him the pictures of the trees, and he will build the tree out of no, wire no, for isn't. you in scale. Wow. Any scale you want. That is amazing. Custom tree yeah. building. Custom. Yeah, that's, custom. yeah, that's awesome. Well, that 12-inch cool. model reminds me of this uh, tree along K96 uh, <laughs> in Kansas. And folks living in the area, you know what, what I'm talking about. It's... Uh, it's right in the ditch along K96, and it's the honking tree. Everybody honking honks tree. for good luck as they go by it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, very cool. It's, so you gave, they've they've you, had news stories about it. It's, uh, <laughs> you gave okay. his email address. It's scaletrains.com. Yeah, it's the website. Yeah, and check him out. Preston he, is the, are amazing. They what's look amazing very is nice. he very wrote nice. in his letter when he sent us this letter this week, um, and Holly read it out loud to me, which was really cool. That he looked at the articles that I did in Mainline Modeler on mm. scale trees and building trees and wire trees and all those different things that we had done so long ago. Um, and that he, he said, somebody else out there gets it. So I thought that was a compliment. He that took was, your work just, and he perfected yes. it. No, I think he was already doing it, though. I think he was already all over it. He just discovered there's, other, there's more of us out there. Very cool. <laughs> no. yeah. Thank you, Creston. And everybody check him out, scaletrees.com. Agreed. Very cool. All right, so going around the table, I think we've covered everything for tonight. I think so. I do believe we have. Um, a lot of stuff coming up, uh, a lot of special guests coming yeah. up. I can't tell you how exciting this summer is going to be. This is going to be fun, folks. It's going to be cool. Best hobby in the world with the best people in it that are going to take our NCE power system, the power cab. I don't see it. Oh, whoa. Wow. Whoa. It. It's camouflage. Wow. Oh, what just happened gosh. here? What's well, in your head? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what? All right. Oh, camouflage. Richard, where you, Richard, <laughs> this is Joshua's NCE. It's supposed to look like this. And Joshua made it look like a real live piece of railroad equipment. Everybody's NCE power cap controller looks right? like everybody else's NCE power controller. Yes. How am I going to distinguish mine from everyone else's? I don't well, want Mike to take now. mine mm -hmm. home. Yes. So now I can. I. Burned it a little bit. I manipulated the plastic melted it. with a torch. Took it apart. To make it look a little more distressed. I painted <laughs> it a different color. And then I brought it over here and Ken distressed it. Put all this brown We dirt. have video of doing this. Yeah, we do. And it just, it really stands out. It sticks out. Everybody asks me, where would I get it? Burnt this, umber and silver make uh, anything look rusty yeah, and yeah. worn yeah, absolutely. on the edges. Oh, you should see what we could do to some of those yeah. Nerf guns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they look there so amazing. Go. Yeah, so a little bit of paint goes a long way. Same way you weather trains. Absolutely. Paint them in your own library colors, you know? How fun is that? Mm -hmm. It only took me a day. Take you just about the same, so. 
Awesome. Be sure to hit the bell, subscribe, like. Thank you for letting us into your homes. Yes. Yeah. Best hobby in the world. Couldn't do it without all of you out there. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Richard. Thanks for running camera. Thank you, Everybody, Richard. let's go run some trades. Bye, everybody. <laughs> all right. Yeah. How fun. I love these trees. I do, too. I should hold a tree. Can I have a tree to hold? Thank you. This is cool. Just Googling Model T fire truck. Okay. This one looked cool. Here you go. I, I didn't know which one. <laughs> Yeah, and it had a whole bunch of pictures, which is okay. Which Ready, is what set, I go! Everybody, look at Richard oh. and show me some teeth. That includes you, James, and go. <laughs> and we have a thumbnail. Yay! Oh, awesome. Okay, these trees are cool. I hope he sells trees, but I hope he doesn't sell too many because I think I want some of these. Yeah, I think I'm gonna buy some of these. Especially for the forefront towards, you know, where right. everyone's going to sit. These so are really Ray, nice. Mm -hmm. Ray Plasheski had some trees on our show before COVID. Those mm -hmm. were cool looking. That was episode cool. 96 or 97. There's been a lot of amazing. I think made in Poland. That was, yeah. that was right before or right after. These are economical yeah. though. These things are very uh, economical. I don't remember it. Um, yeah. The gentleman from Mr. Rogers. Okay. Paul Lolly. Paul Lolly. That was yeah. either the episode right before or right after. Well, we lost, yeah, I, I just know we lost power and uh, then we lost internet. And... We didn't even talk about the train we were running tonight. I know. Yeah, well, you can. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, it's the California Zephyr. All right, here goes sound. I'm stopping sound. Okay, sounds good.